I was born in North Sydney here in 1934, what was called then the Hamilton Memorial Hospital, and it was operated by uh, Sisters of Charity. And this hospital grew into the Northside General Hospital, which it is now. I, both my father and my mother, uh, there, he was an operator and then a uh, shift boss at the Western Union, which is the telegraph station in North Sydney. Mm -hmm. And my mother was a secretary there, and that's where they met. So I uh, went away to uh, university in uh, 1954 to Mount Allison in Sackville, New Brunswick. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I went down to uh, Oxford, Nova Scotia, where I taught for a few years. Went down to Dalhousie to get a master's degree. Then I joined the Chronicle Herald and worked in Halifax for a number of years as a political reporter there okay. and in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. And returned, I went to work for the Honorable Robert Stanfield in Ottawa for a while. and. Uh, then came back to Halifax, worked with the Nova Scotia Teachers Union for about 20 years, okay. and then returned to North Sydney. And North Sydney is the first incorporated town in Cape Breton. Mm -hmm. It was 1885. And uh, we were very busy fishing port. There's three major plants right on the front street of the fishing plants. And we had visits from both the American fishing fleet and the Portuguese fishing fleet, which came in every year, which are, are glorious ships, beautiful. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of them were still under sail at that time. Um, we had a huge coal pier, and we shipped coal all over the world from North Sydney. North Sydney was a very booming town always. My father was very interested in local history, and uh, of course it just passed automatically to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, the background of the families in North Sydney and uh, See, at first North Sydney, a lot of the people came from uh, originally, who were settlers here, they came after uh, the American Revolution and uh, people who were United Empire Loyalists came. Then there was a lot of Scots came who were Highland uh, Gaelic speakers, there were some of them. But the biggest uh, flow of people came in when I was growing up was Newfoundland people. This is prior to Confederation with Newfoundland, and I would suppose a new North Sydney would be about 50% of Newfoundland people who were descendants of them. They were, they, they've been very, they came attracted by the fishery and the fish plants here. And, you know, there would be 50 to 100 schooners in the, in the harbor at one time when I was a boy. And then in World War II, of course, the, the harbor was extremely busy because uh, we, convoys sailed from here, the slow convoys. Uh, that sailed a lot of them to Murmansk and in uh, the years 1940 to 43, especially they were. And uh, we were blessed with the ability to have ammunition ships in our harbor here because Halifax refused their entry after the blow up in World War I. They sent the ships down here, the ammunition ships. I think they must have, might have felt that Cape Bretoners were a little easier to be disposable than than the Haligonians were. Mm. But it was a very, very interesting time for a boy to grow up to watch mm -hmm. 75, 80 ships in the harbor and uh, the various convoys. And uh, it was a busy, busy port. When I was growing up, the main street was jam-packed with people. Of course, there wasn't many cars around, so parking wasn't a big problem, mm -hmm. as, it is to, as it would be today. Uh, there were still horses being uh, used a lot. and then. The middle of town there was a horse trough at which both the horses and a lot of us who were small boys used to get drinks from. And uh, we, the, the, the main town, especially on Saturdays, was extremely busy as the farmers would come in and they would uh, do trade with the local merchants. And at that time, to a very great extent, especially with grocery stores, that uh, it was farm produce from Cape Breton Farms, mm -hmm. ones just in the area here. And the seasonal goods that were available were, mm -hmm. summer and fall were great, great times mm -hmm. to be, uh, to, to get fresh goods and so on. It, it was a small and a, a very well-knit town and a good place to grow up. The main, main person that's who uh, 
who has been the driving force behind the historical society has been a fellow called Jim Walsh. And Jim is uh, not enjoying the best of health right now, but if it wasn't for him, there wouldn't be uh, this museum or uh, the new museum. Mm -hmm. Jim has been the, the real great organizer throughout it. And there's a, another chap, Albert Wilkie, who has acted as treasurer for a number of years. He is a, he has always did a very, very good job. He's a very conscientious worker. And then uh, Mr. and Mrs. Gordon Carmichael were real rocks to get this organization going. And uh, they've, even as, as they grow older, they've helped to contribute. Mm -hmm. And uh, But pe people like this who volunteer, and in a small town, uh, volunteering is much more important than it is in, a, in a, anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Because we don't have anything to fall back upon if, it's, if it wasn't for the people who were doing the, the work itself. And, uh, we, we, we've been very, very lucky in that way. Yeah. The, Iona, the Iona connection is much better suited to mm -hmm. carry on stuff, especially to act as a buffer uh, with the Department of Tourism in Halifax and to let us know what other museums are doing who are similar to us, and, and you know, from right from Cape North to, to Port Hawkesbury and back this way again, or Port Hastings, I guess. And um, we we will maintain our, our membership in that, and we will be more active mm -hmm. once we get this new building underway. I think it speaks much better for the museums of Cape Breton than any other body. We've had uh, some very, very fine people, both involved with the museum and, uh, you know, throughout the, uh, our history, we, we, we've had excellent excellent citizens here in this town mm -hmm. and uh, my my thing is it's a, it's no chore at all to try and keep the memory of such things alive mm -hmm. and uh, I'm only too happy to do that I, I I I can't think of anything that would enhance our future as much as the complete understanding of our past we we uh, to, to my mind, the people and the place here itself, they've created a, you know, a, something that is just is indelible in, in this community.